Questions 21 through 25 on the 2013 Grade 8 AMC 8. Samantha lives two blocks west and one block south of the southwest corner of City Park. Her school is two blocks east and two blocks north of the northwest corner of City Park. On school day, she bikes on the streets to the southwest corner of the City Park, takes a diagonal path through the park to the northeast corner of City Park, and then bikes on the streets to school. If her route is as short as possible, how many different routes can she take? Well, this is City Park right here, and we are told that Samantha is two blocks west and one block south. So let's just say this is a block, two blocks west, one block south. Okay, so this is Sam right here. And then this is that southwest corner. And then her school is two blocks east, two blocks north of the northeast corner. So this is the northeast corner. So we got to go two blocks east and then two blocks north. Okay, so we got to get from here to here. And they're saying how many different ways are there? Well, the diagonal path across, that's just one way like that so that there's only one way of doing that but we have to figure out how to get from here to here and then we'll talk about to get from here to here okay well these are city blocks so because they're city blocks there's going to be roads connecting them so let's draw in the possible paths the first one is like this so that's the first one I'll just draw it up here I went up and then I went across two the next one would be, let's see here, like this. So it's sort of a up and down kind of thing. And then the third one is just straight across and up like that. So that kind of thing. And that's it because the key here is that her route is as short as possible. So she's not going to do one of these things, you know, because that's obviously not as short as possible. So Sam, to get from, I guess, her home to this corner, there's three possible ways, and these are the three possible ways. Then to get from this corner to that corner, there's only one way, and that's the straight diagonal all the way across. So there's only one way of doing that. Now we have to talk about this scenario here. Again, it's city blocks. So there's going to be roads between each of those blocks. Now we have to think about how many possible ways are there to get from here to here. All right, well, I think the first one is just like that. So I'll just draw those up here. The next one, this kind of a step pattern. So that's like this. And the next one would be this way, all the way up and like that. So that's going to be kind of like that. And then the next one would be up and across. And then a step pattern like that and then finally the last one would be across like that so something like this like that so how many did I get one two three four five six I got six over here so the total would be this 3 times this 1 times that 6. So 3 times 1 times 6, and that is 18. So number 21, the answer is E. Toothpicks are used to make a grid of 60 toothpicks long and 32 toothpicks high. How many toothpicks are used altogether? Well, let's talk about a simple example, and then we can extrapolate. So let's say we have, instead of 60 and 32, we have 4 and 3, like this. And this can be drawn pretty quickly. And because there's so few of them, we can talk about it. And that same sort of pattern, we can then apply to our big question. Okay, so if I said to you, it's a 4 by 3, how many toothpicks are there? Well, I have to have a system. Instead of counting, I could count them. But let's create a system. This is 4 and this is 3, right? So first what I want to do is I want to count these guys right here. These ones that are horizontal. The horizontal toothpicks. Well, instead of counting, I can have a system. 
How many rows are there? Well, this side was three, but if you notice, there's four rows. One, two, three, four. So that means there was one more row than that side. So three plus one is how many rows? And in each row, there was four toothpicks. Why four? Because that's the dimension of that side. So multiply this by four. And that is how you get the number of toothpicks that are horizontal. So this is what, 4 times 4 is 16. Now, I want to count the ones that are, are vertical. Okay, well, actually, I don't want to count them. I want to create a system. Well, this side is 4, but the number of, I guess, columns is one more than that side's dimension. So it's 4 plus 1. And then in each column, the number of toothpicks is equal to the dimension of that side, so 3. So this is 5 times 3, which is 15, and that total is 31. And then there are indeed 31 toothpicks. So I'm going to do the same thing this time, but with a 60 by 32 uh, dimensions. So same philosophy. You take 32 this time, add 1, and then you multiply it by 60. And that gives you the number of toothpicks in the horizontal rows. Then in the vertical rows, it would be 60 plus 1, and then you multiply by 32. And then, of course, you will have to add these two numbers to get the total. So as you can see, when you break it down into some small example and then extrapolate it, it makes it easier to digest, I think. Okay, so 32 plus 1 times 60 is 1980. And then 60 plus 1 times 32 is 1952. And then when you add them up, you get 3932. And 3932 is choice E for number 22. Angle ABC of triangle ABC is a right angle. And the sides of ABC are diameters of semicircles. The area of semicircle AB is 8 pi, and the arc of semicircle on AC has a length of 8.5 pi. What is the radius of semicircle on BC? Okay, let's take this one step at a time. The area of the semicircle on AB, so that's this guy right here, has an area of 8 pi, so this is 8 pi. Well, how do you figure out the area of a semicircle? Well, it's pi r squared divided by 2, and they're telling you that's 8 pi. So that means pi r squared is equal to 16 pi. The pi's cancel. r squared is 16. And therefore, r is equal to 4. So the radius is 4. So therefore, that diameter will be 8. So I'll just put 8 right there. Now we turn our attention to the next guy. The arc of the semicircle on AC has a length of 8.5. What that means is this guy right here, that arc has a length of 8.5. Now that is representing half of the circumference. So circumference divided by 2, they're telling me, is 8.5. So the circumference is 17. The circumference is, in terms of, um, sorry, this should be pi. Uh, in terms of uh, radius, the circumference is written as pi times 2r, and that's 17 pi. Pi's cancel, so 2r is 17. So that means this is 17, that distance. So I'll just put 17 right there. Okay, now we turn our attention to BC. Well, BC we can figure out using Pythagoras, since that's a right triangle. So 8 squared plus BC squared is equal to 17 squared. So BC squared is equal to 17 squared minus 8 squared, and that's going to be 225, and therefore BC is equal to 15. So from here to here is 15. And they want you to find the radius, okay, of that semicircle. Well, the diameter obviously is 15, so the radius is half of the diameter which is 15 divided by 2, and that's 7.5. So number 23, the answer is B.
Squares A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, G, H, I, J are equal in area. Point C and D are the midpoints of I, H, N, H, E, respectively. What is the ratio of the area of the shaded pentagon A, J, I, C, B to the sum of the areas of the three squares? Okay, well, let's make our life easy. Let's give the squares dimensions one by one. So each of those squares has an area of one times one, which is one. But there's three squares, so the total area will be three. So they want you to find the ratio of that shaded region, A, J, I, C, B, to the sum of the areas of the three squares, which we just figured out was three. So if I can find this, I'm done with the question. Okay, so how do I find the area of that shaded region? Well, there's several ways, I think, some a little bit more complicated than others, but I think the easiest way is just to draw a line that kind of connects like that. And if you do that, you'll notice that this becomes a shape that is a triangle. This shape right here, A, B, that kind of thing, that's a triangle. And if I can get the area of that triangle and then subtract from it this rectangle, I'll get the area of that shaded region. Okay, let's label this now. From here to here, we just labeled that one. And then this is also a side of the square, so that's one. This is equivalent to that, so that's one. And then now we just have to figure out what is that. Well, from here to here is the same as from here to here. C is the midpoint of IH. IH is right there, which is one. And C is the midpoint, so therefore that is going to be a half. So therefore that's a half. So there we go, we have everything we need. So the area of the shaded region, AS, is the area of that big triangle, which will be 1 half base times height, 2 times 1.5, minus that uh, rectangle right there. So that will be 1 times 0 0.5, like that. So this looks like 1.5 times a uh, minus 0 0.5, and that's just 1. So that shaded region is just 1. So this just becomes 1 over 3. And that's it. So number 24, the answer is C. A ball with a diameter 4 inches starts at A to roll along the track shown. The track is comprised of three semicircular arcs whose radii are R1 equals 100, R2 equals 60, and R3 equals 80, respectively. The ball always remains in contact with the track and does not slip. What is the distance in inches the center of the ball travels over the course from A to B? Well, what I need to do is first draw an example to kind of illustrate what is happening. Now, this ball initially is here, and then here's the center, right? Here's the center, and here's the center. As the ball rolls, the centers actually travel like that, if you notice, like that. So that blue line I just drew is the distance we have to calculate. The most common error will be to calculate the distance around there. That is wrong. That is where the ball touches, but we are specifically asked to find the distance that the center of the ball travels. So that makes it a little bit challenging. Okay, well, how do you do that? Well, first, let's understand how would we figure out the distance if we were just looking at that, which is, of course, the red. Well, that's just the circumference divided by 2. So you just try to figure out c over 2. And c is 2 times pi times r over 2. And in our first case, for r1, it's 100, right? So that means this is just pi times 100. So that's the distance from here to here, which in this diagram over here is the red line. But we don't want the red line. We want the blue line. Well, how do we figure out the blue line? Well, that's where this piece of information came, comes in, that the diameter of that small circle is 4. If the diameter is 4, then that means that this little guy, the radius, is 2. So what we are really looking at is a circle 
that does not have a radius across of 100, but we're only going to this point right here. So if this is the center of the circle, we want to calculate from the center till here, which would be 100 minus 2, right? Because this whole thing would be 100, but then we've got to subtract this 2 because we have to look at the center of the ball. So instead of C over 2 using 100, we're going to use 98 because it's 100 minus that 2, which is 98. So the first distance, it would basically be 98 pi. So I'll just put that there, 98 pi. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Okay, now let's look at the next guy. Well, this is different actually. You think, well, okay, I got the hang of it, I'm an expert, but it's not the same. This time, the nature of this uh, diagram is the ball starts to roll on the top surface of that semicircle. So now, if the center is here, here, and here, as the ball rolls along, it's actually going to have a path like that, which is actually longer because we're outside now. Did you notice that? So this time, if this is the radius, say, what is the radius for R2 is 60, right? So from here to here is 60. We now have to add another 2 because the radius of that small circle is 2. So instead of the standard uh, 60 pi, which is what the circumference would be for that circle, we have to add 2, so it would be 62 pi. All right, so I hope that makes sense. And then the last one, fortunately, is identical to the first one, where you just have to look at it from the scenario that now the circle, a small circular ball, is traveling in the interior. It's going to be here, right? Like that. So in the same way that you subtracted for the first scenario, you do the same thing. So instead of 80, it would be 78 for the radius. So when you calculate the circumference, it would be 78 pi. So that's a cool question, a bit challenging, but not too bad. So now we have to add up all these. So it's 98 pi plus 62 pi plus 78 pi. And when you do, you get 238 pi for the total distance that the center of the ball travels over the course from A to B. So for number 25, that is choice A.